long ago, there was a magnificent country. A beautiful land where people celebrated freedom and a life free of fetters. This gave birth to a great many outstanding artists. These creators became wealthy through their works and made the country rich too. It was a picture of prosperity and exuberance. However, soon enough, the monster of greed began to sow evilness in the hearts of the people. Everyone wanted to be the next rich artist, and no one was willing to work a normal job. They squabbled over all matters, big and small, and their works became pretentious and hollow. The world became shrouded in darkness, and the once clear sky disappeared from view. It was at this time that a great artist gathered everyone together. He called on them to display their works publicly for honest comment and critique. At the gala, the shoddy and spurious works were criticized, and the works deserving of praise received their due. A total of seven master artists were elected to govern the country, and the ceremony was held every five years after that. Since then, the once chaotic Amorphes has seen the emergence of a new order. Now, a master puppet maker has inherited the mantle of one of the seven master artists. She threaded the silk through the joints of the puppets, combed their hair with her slender fingers, and named them with her most exquisite voice. Luke, the younger sister. Nintha, the elder sister. These, These are, are the, the best, best works among all her creations. Nintha takes care of the household chores where the maker resides with other ladies, while Luke renders her meticulous service in their daily life. When the maker is absent, Nintha evaluates the examinee on her behalf. While Luke welcomes the visitors at the door, with manners that even that lady cannot find fault with. A lift of the finger. They're nothing for her best puppets. Don't you think, Nika? I would have to agree with you, Luke. This is the story of Luke and Nika, the most outstanding maids in the Society of Muses. A long, long time ago. So long ago that even he cannot remember how long it has been. A boy woke up and found himself in a garden full of golden apples. He looked at the apples hanging all over the garden, wondering who had planted these trees. He looked at the rows of fences around him, wondering who had trapped him here. One day, he looked up at the profoundly blue sky, and there, within the clouds, he discovered a whole other world. A wide open world. A world where people laughed and cried. A world where they experienced joy and sorrow. For the very first time, he realized that he had other options than just thinking about those two unanswerable questions. What a pleasure it was to just sit there and watch the scenes of life unfold on the other side. Soon enough, however, the boy discovered something else. Over there, people's lives were ordinary and repetitive. Their world was clearly so much larger. So why did it seem like nothing more than a narrow cage? The boy grew tired. He realized that they were concerned with only one question, even one less than he. They were afraid of anything new, moving around each other in small and pitiful circles. Half the time, they would close their eyes and just lie there, doing nothing. So boring. So terribly boring. He muttered to himself, and then unfurled his wings. He soared through the clouds and into the vortex, disregarding the burning pain, and arrived at the other side of the heavens. This was how the stuffy world welcomed a ray of light. The boy traveled around, telling ordinary people what the true meaning of life was. 
He gained a group of loyal believers, leaving scriptures that were handed down from generation to generation. He transformed the world and set it on the right path. People sought to become a better version of themselves. They broke free of their chains, and interesting and wonderful stories happened everywhere and all the time. It was also on this journey that the boy met a girl who thought the same way as him. The girl had long, beautiful silver hair that was tied into a lovely ponytail. Like the boy, she had no need to close her eyes half the time. Her eyes were big and bright, and like the boys, they sparkled with curiosity about the future. The like-minded pair traveled far and wide with no disputes. Only joy accompanied them on their journey. The girl said to the boy, You are the most interesting being I've ever met. I want you to always be by my side, now and forever. The boy readily agreed. He shed no tears for the golden garden behind him, and cared even less about his scars and bruises. As long as the girl needed him, he was happy to stay with her. However, the girl's words were nothing but lies. She took advantage of the boy's unquestioning attitude, and dripped a golden magic liquid into his eyes. The boy who had not closed his eyes since he woke up in the garden fell unconscious, and only came to several years later. He had been trapped inside a mirror, and the girl was nowhere to be seen. The paradise relapsed in the dearth of its evangelist. The despicable had prevailed. The boy wandered with the mirror for a hundred years and never saw the girl again. He could not understand why she had lied to him and trapped him in the mirror, but because he never got an answer, he could not bring himself to hate her. A hundred years ago, all order in this land was lost, and greed caused the people to forsake their ideals. Lies were told for the sake of fame and fortune, and people set strangers up all in the name of self-interest. A visionary stood out with a heart of righteousness, crying for the restoration of order and guidance to artistic innovations. Not everyone, however, welcomed his vision with open arms. Those who didn't want their wicked share taken away threatened his ideas with words and daggers, only to be met by a red-haired girl and her sword. If you are afraid to listen to him, it means his words prick at your conscience. If you dare not look at his works, it means you have lost the ability to see beauty. I don't care who you are. Whoever wants to shut him up with the blade will first have to contend with my sword! The girl's words stunned the angry critics. And since then, she has been the visionary's faithful follower and defender. As the years passed, she acquired a number of scars. And she was never seen without her sturdy suit of armor. She never married, and nor has she expressed any desire for power. All along, she kept the promise she made when she was a girl. The visionary said, How about I give your order of knights a name? Let's see. What do you think of Convalaria? Once upon a time, there was a sleepy girl. In her dreams, the moon was a swing. The train was a line of cherry cakes. And the clouds were an endless, fluffy array of vanilla ice cream. She tried and tried to chase all the drowsies. But these lambs were always quicker and new dreams just came after her whenever she woke up. 
Little did she know, her dreams always pulled the others inside before turning them into little drowsies. A kind-hearted lady told her about the scary story of her dreams and warned her not to sleep with others around her. The girl was upset. No more visitors in the dreams. No more hide-and-seek with her friends when she was sleeping. Hide-and-seek, is it? I'll play the game with you this time. The kind-hearted lady smiled at her. Yeah, play hide-and-seek with your friends and you become better friends. And so she entered the girl's dream. In the fairyland, they stood under a chocolate clock tower. The long hand, look for me only after it finishes one circle. The girl pointed upward. So the lady waited and waited. She set off after the long hand had returned to its starting point. But she could not find the girl anywhere in the fairyland. She searched on and asked the residents about a sleepy girl with a stuffed lamb in her arms. No, definitely not. I'd have known if such an adorable girl came by, said Auntie Bear the candy seller. Hmm, no idea. Didn't see a girl like that. The rabbit lowered its balloons. A witch in a big hat scried the girl's whereabouts. She told the lady the girl chased a shining star into the clock tower. The lady returned to the tower, and the long hand was pointing at the night. She found the girl fast asleep in the clock room inside the tower. She had a sweet dream with her lamb. And the little star above lighted up her face throughout the night. The sun was coming out when she woke up. And together with the lady, she left the dream and fairyland. The girl got a nice nightgown at the lady's mansion. You can sleep here whenever you want. No worries. And I'll teach you to control your dreams. Thank you. Um, here. This is for you. The girl cupped a little star in her hands. The lady was very astonished. Um, I can't remember where I got it. I chased after it. Then I fell asleep. The lady accepted this gift and told her to keep the star a secret. A secret forever belongs to her and her best friend.